Today we're looking at a clip of Vivek Ramaswamy handling what could have been a very bad situation like a boss. And he turns this question around from this lady who's very aggressive. It's a very, very rude and accusing question. And on the spot, he turns it around and gives the perfect answer. Check it out right here. Mr. Ramaswamy, um, thank you. <laughs> You've expressed some illogical and dangerous positions, just about everything under the sun. But I will only bring up a few points today. <laughs> okay. Just be respectful of everyone, but we'll, yes, we'll pick your you. favorite ones. Thank you. Just a few years ago, we all saw firsthand the disastrous results when a ruthless capitalist, a scam artist, a showman, and a liar with no public service experience became the president of the United States. And yet we are here again. My fellow New Hampshire residents are being manipulated by showmen and Trump wannabes to win our votes. Mr. Ramaswamy, you may be a millionaire, and you may know how to avoid paying taxes by incorporating companies in Bermuda, but let's talk about your lack of job qualifications. You're not qualified to become the principal of my children's school of only 1,000 students. You're not qualified to be the select board of my town with a population of 16,000 people. And you're definitely not qualified to run for the highest office of our nation to govern 330 million Americans. Spewing nonsensical, fast-talking, empty words interspersed with name-dropping Thomas Jefferson and George Washington should not be misconstrued as knowledgeable. We Americans should stop thinking that rich men who fund their campaigns and manipulate us into thinking that they're smart or savvy are qualified for the presidency to receive the codes to launch nuclear weapons and to become the commander-in-chief of our military forces. Yes, it's coming. Mr. Ramaswamy, if we American voters... We'll let her finish. We'll give her a chance to finish. Thank you. It, it Mr. ends with a question mark, though. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You will. Yeah, yeah. You, if we American voters keep supporting self-promoting showmen who treat the U.S. presidency or vice presidency as an entry-level position, then we, the American people, are to blame for the destruction of our democratic institutions. Please, your thoughts, Don. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Before you answer, before you answer. I want to answer that, yeah. I know you want to answer, and I want you to answer, but everyone, remember, everyone's in here at the same time. You can make your point, but get to the question first. Yeah. Try to? Okay. And, and hard questions are welcome. Just end them with the question mark is all I say. So here's what I will say. There's, what do I hear embedded in that question? There's a fundamental skepticism of somebody who comes from outside and take as an entry-level job. That was what was in your question, which I think is a, a valid criticism an entry-level job to be the U.S. president. Let me just share with you one of my learnings in this campaign. We have an imperfect system right now, and you all face imperfect choices in that system. We were talking about this backstage. What was the number one learning for me? This is a super PAC puppet game. It's my number one learning coming in from the outside. You're told that candidates actually run campaigns that you fund by giving $35 contributions. Nonsense. The system is funded by not multimillionaires, multi-billionaires who use politicians in both parties, Democrat and Republican Party, as their puppets. The super PACs are a cancer on our system. So if you want to break that system, and I'll tell you, it's a law of nature. It's like a law of physics. As the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, every politician dances to the tune of their biggest donor. It's just a fact. Now, in my case, it is true that that biggest donor is me. Now, do I want a system in which only people who have had the level of success that I've had in the world of business and the American dream are the ones who are able to run for president? No. But is that better than a system where it's somebody else's billionaire puppet that's on that debate stage that actually is just uttering words handed to them by a billionaire provided super PAC? Yes, I think that's better. And I think if we're going to address the corruption in Washington, D.C., the corruption of people, and there are other candidates in this race that fit this description, making millions of dollars off of connections in government service, afterwards, lobbying in a career using government connections, this is corruption that exists in both parties, then yes, I do think it will take an outsider to that system coming in to break that system. One of the things that I think we need to stop apologizing for in this country is the power of capitalism. I have succeeded not in government, and I will not feign having government experience that I don't have. But the people who do have government experience, in some ways, got us into the mess that we're in today. So I think we live in a moment where it will take an outsider 
Someone who comes from the outside. Ideally, even someone who comes from the next generation. To reach the next generation of whom we have so many in this room today. I think it will take somebody whose best days, I hope, are still yet ahead in life. To see a country whose best days are still yet ahead in life. And I'm not name dropping when I mention Thomas Jefferson. These are people I look up to as our founding fathers. He was 33 years old when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. I'm an old man by comparison. He invented the swivel chair while he was at it. That's the founding spirit we need to revive in this country. And in this particular moment, Yes, I do think it will take an outsider to do it. So we saw Vivek do this a lot during his campaign when he would run into these situations at his events where there would be a heckler, a protester, or somebody asking a question from the other side of the aisle that was very aggressive and, and against him and, and his policies. Um, and he would masterfully turn it around and turn it to his advantage. He was very skillful at that. Uh, to, and he would do it live. He would do it on the spot. And just come up with these great answers. And I think that this is this is an example of him doing that right here. So, and, and when he addresses this woman's question, which is really a non-question, right? She just gave this long-winded rant against him, putting him down, calling him a grifter. But he still turned it into gold. And, and, he, and he built a great moment for himself from her negativity towards him. What his answer said was that DC and America needs an outsider. We don't need more career politicians who are working within the system, who are born from the system, and in that way they're corrupt and they're, they're working for the elites. They're not working for the American people. We need somebody who comes from the real world Comes from, uh, comes from a realm like business or entrepreneurship, something that's more results driven because we need to get good results for the American people, for the economy, for all the issues that we're facing, whether they're global threats from uh, um, diplomatic situations that are getting out of hand, whether they're more domestic like the border. We need people who are not afraid to call it like it is take action and deliver results for the American people, not just lip service. That's what politicians do. The people that this woman who was asking the question, probably um, the people who appeal to her, that she's looking for, right? She's saying that he's not a real leader and Donald Trump's not a real leader. They're not real politicians. They're fast talking scammers or whatever she said. She wants somebody who's more of a politician, who's more polished and whatever. People like that have been running America's great cities into the ground for the last X number of decades. Crime is, is out of control. They're not doing anything to fix the economic issues in these areas. And uh, these, these career politicians, these professional politicians suck. And we need somebody new. Vivek's answer was perfect. He said, America needs an outsider. And, um, and, and he is an outsider. Trump is an outsider. We see the, the night and day comparison in the demeanor and the messaging of these people versus the D.C. bred politicians. I, I find it refreshing. I think that it's a new direction. It's a populist direction that America ought to head in if it really if it wants different results than what it's been getting. If it wants a, cha a, a real change, not just the change that. Democrats talk about uh, when they go into the inner cities and they and they build up these welfare programs and they promise change and it just creates more misery, uh, permanence of poverty, uh, more wars for the American people. That when they say you know peace and love and tolerance, and then you have Democrats, establishment Democrats um, that are pushing wars, America funding wars. Tax dollars being sent to go and kill people abroad. It's just, we are so tired of it. And we see it for what it is now. And uh, we're looking for something different. That's why, that's why Vivek did so well. And that's why he came out as a golden child of this populist movement. Everybody loves him now. When he started, nobody really knew who he was. And that's, of course, why Trump has been so effective is because he's offering something that's actually different for the American people. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this clip. Do you think that Vivek handled this well? 
please uh, leave a comment. If you liked the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.